What's up, everybody? Thralls Miller here once again. I'm the Crockneck. I'm Jim and John. And once again, instead of a review, we have something different. This week in particular was kind of slow. And I mean, I know there were some releases that came out. I could probably cover them in a collection update at some point if I choose to get them. But we wanted to get, again, more into some like discussions and some more stuff that gets, you know, a little bit more audience participation in terms of like, you know, stuff that's debatable. Mm -hmm. And we came up with yet another one that I think is a really good subject to go over. So we're going to talk about bands that have changed their sound over the course of their career and whether or not we think they changed for the better or well they didn't now some of these i'll admit kind of fall in a gray area where it's really hard to say because you know you just end up being a fan of either side of their sound but we listen to tons of bands and we've listened to bands throughout their entire careers and how much they've changed and morphed over that time and it's just sort of an interesting thing like you know the motivations behind it you know why they chose to change and again whether or not the change actually really worked or it ended up alienating fans and then people ended up hating them right you know uh, it's the, kind of the usual discussions that we go over in discography rankings where we run into kind of a roadblock like ah what happened here right oh that's bad yeah i mean and there's there's so many bands too once he posed this idea we were sitting and talking and i said oh man this and this and this and this i mean there's a bunch too that i think you could argue either way and that was part of the discussion we wanted to open up because there's a bunch of bands that you know I've been listening to for a number of years that have definitely changed their sound, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it's made them bad. It's just turned them into a different entity. And we're also not going over like a lot of bands that you know kind of just went through a phase where they just changed for a little bit and then you know had a flat out return to form sort of you know transition toward the end or at least like currently. So there's some bands that you know, we kind of left off this list, but we got some that I think are definitely worth discussing. And we're gonna kick it off with one that's literally all over the news right now because they did something absolutely amazing at the Olympics, we're going to talk about Gojira. Now, when I got into Gojira, it was from Mars to Cirrus, and mm -hmm. I still would say that that run between From Mars to Cirrus, The Way of All Flesh, and La Font Sauvage, that is kind of my favorite era of yep. Gojira. Yep. I go back to that quite often, but I also like their earlier stuff, like Terra Incognita, The Link, and I still like their more recent stuff like Magma and Fortitude. And this one right out of the gate is kind of tough because I can't say for certain if the change they made was for the better or for the worse. You could argue in terms of like popularity and accessibility, yes. Like they are a much bigger band than they were before and their sound definitely has more of a mass appeal. But at the same time, I still feel as though it retains its core elements in terms of what they started with. Gojira is such a tough one because I'm a big fan of Gojira. I, much like Nick, got into them with From Mars to Sirius, which I still think is one of their best albums. That record is an absolute banger. Uh, the Way of All Flesh was, oh man, an absolute banger. La Font Sauvage was great. And I really like The Link and Terra Incognita, The Link more so. I think The Link is a killer underrated album. I don't know in terms of, of change because while I'm not the biggest fan of Fortitude, I did like Magma. I like Magma quite a bit. In fact, we saw them a couple times live on that tour and they crushed. I would state in my personal opinion, I, it's not that I hate Fortitude, but I don't like how they've kind of softened themselves a little bit and I, I guess they're maybe placating to a bigger audience. I don't know if that's the right word, but I mean, like, like, I don't think Fortitude had the same strength behind it that, say, From Mars to Sirius had or The no. Way of All Flesh. Like, not at all. I don't know if they're necessarily changing their sound, though, so much as they are adapting to the times. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, like, their sound is still built on the same elements. Like, they're known for their syncopated, heavy chugging. Yeah. The riffs themselves aren't necessarily that complex, yet it's still kind of progressive metal, I would yeah. say, or progressive death metal, at least in the earlier years. And as for, like, Fortitude, I mean, honestly, Fortitude and Magma are kind of, like, two sides of the same coin, at least to me. Like, they're about the same level of heaviness. The approach to the songwriting is very much the same, because that was the first one where I really noticed, like, all right, these songs are a little bit more stripped down in terms of, like, the complex rhythms and such. They're more about that big hook, like you listen to that giant chorus on Stranded. Like, that's yeah. that's a hook that, honestly, we really didn't hear before that. So that's kind of the turning point there. 
In terms of like better or worse, I mean, again, this entire thing's like very subjective, mm -hmm. and I know tons of people that became fans with Magma, but there are elements that I miss from the past. One hundred percent. So I'm I'm kind of just gonna go with like the middle position here. Like I like both eras. I can't really say whether it's better or worse, but I like everything that they've put out so far, and unless they really shit the bed on this next one, which I really don't anticipate. Uh, I, I would still say I'm kind of like just firmly in neutral territory on this one. Again, from Mars to Sirius, that whole era of Gojira, that's my favorite, and I really like that era. As far as changing their sound, like, it's minuscule at best. Like, they're changing some elements, but they haven't lost the core of what makes them Gojira. So, while I will say that I like the From Mars to Sirius era better than where they are currently, I can't necessarily dive on board with saying they've changed their sound or are changing their sound. Yeah, there are certain elements I wish they would pick back up. I mean, it is notably different. Like, you listen it, to From Mars to Sirius. Well, right. And then listen to, like, Fortitude. Right. It's still the same band, but it's different. I'm on the fence about that. I can't say where they're going is worse. It's just different. And I'm not necessarily on board with that difference. I, I can't say that it's worse because it's not. I don't know. <laughs> this one is really difficult. Actually, there's a lot of things on here that are really difficult. We're going to get there. As for me personally, I will state that I will side with their darker, heavier era versus their newer sound. But I can't say that their newer sound is worse. It's just different. And the next one, and this one's always fun to talk about because of their vast shift, Opeth. I mean, I would state, I guess, worse. I really dig the fuck out of everything from, like, still life all the way up to Watershed. That, for me, is Opeth through and through. I got into Opeth with Blackwater Park. Bleak is probably still one of my most favorite Opeth songs of all time, and that says a lot because there's a lot in there. Uh, Deliverance, I do, the track Deliverance alone is a banger. Even Damnation, while it is softer like some of the newer stuff is, it was different, and I love the shit out of that album. Watershed, of course, is a banger through and through. If you've watched our ranking, you all know where that one sits. Ghost Reveries is amazing. That jump from Watershed to Heritage was so severe. I remember turning on Heritage going, all right, new Opeth, and I turned it on, and I was like, what the hell is this? And then Sorceress, I was just like, man, no. And then Incarnate of Adam, you know, when that came out, I was like, well, this is kind of okay, but not really. I don't know, I think they got worse. Mm. I, yeah, I mean, worse, I mean, all right, like, musically, it really isn't much of a drop off. It's just not what I wanted. Like, this is like ordering, you know, a, an excellent meal that, you know, like, oh, I really love that on the menu. I want to get that. And I've had it before and it was delicious. And then someone comes with a plate of something else that's also good, but you're like, man, this doesn't quite satisfy, you know, the palate here. Right. Or you order it off the menu and they're like, we don't have this, but as a substitute, we have this. And you're like, that's not, no. And I remember when The Devil's Orchard dropped as a single for Heritage, and it was like, woo, new Opeth. And I listened to it, I was like, what the hell happened to the guitars? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> it's just very listless. Like, yeah, the playing's great, you know, the production sounds way different, it's more analog, and uh, I'm not hearing any growling, maybe that's just the single. And then I bought the album when it came out, and not a growl to be found. Nope. And that's one of the big complaints. Michael is a fantastic vocalist. He can croon his ass off. Yep. He's a great singer, yep. but he's also got this absolutely demonic growl that is just fucking amazing. Yep. yep. And to completely just sacrifice that and go in this more progressive rock direction, it, it didn't really sit well with me. And then Pale Communion came out, and that really didn't sit well with me. No. And I still think that album's pretty damn boring. Except for Voice of Treason. That That's song whoops not ass. enough to save that but it's boring not. ass no. album. No. But this whole prog era. I do like songs in it. I think the music's, you know, it's it's good. It's just, again, not what I wanted. I got into Opeth with Deliverance. And yeah, yeah like hearing the song Deliverance, like, dear God, this is a masterpiece. Oh, especially the ending. So oh. damn heavy. <laughs> but it's also very melodic and it shows off all the playing. And I feel like I get everything with that sound. Yep. I still get the brutality. I still get all the melody. And what I get with this current era that's been going on for a while you know, I get a lot of the melody. There's like still great hooks. Like I really liked Incada Venom, but it still wasn't necessarily the Opeth that I truly wanted. So yeah, I, I do say 
that they got worse, at least in terms of like my tastes in music, like as musicians. <laughs> there's, there's no one in that band that isn't a killer musician. 100%. You have to be a killer musician to play an Opeth. Now, as a redeeming factor, I will say, if you have not heard the new Opeth single yet, listen to it. It gave me goosebumps. There are growls again. I've listened to it like four times today. And uh, it, it's pretty good. So there may be hope for Opeth yet. But as as far as the change is concerned, I think they got worse. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, this new single reminds me a lot of Watershed. And I see that as, like, a partial transition. Because I feel like there should have been another step in between mm -hmm, Watershed mm -hmm. and Heritage. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I, I would say that their later material does not compare to their earlier material. Especially in, like, those glory days when they were just kicking ass from album to album. All right, the next one up. Probably had this debate numerous times. I mean, every metalhead probably has this debate numerous times, and most metalheads have the same answer that I'm about to say. Metallica, did they get better or did they get worse? And yeah, no, they got worse. They got a lot worse. First four albums, great. Okay. I still love them. I go back to them actually relatively frequently. Like I just listened to Ride the Lightning again, like not more than like a week ago. I was like, yeah, this was a great pick. Yep. I'm glad I listened to this. I don't get that when I listen to Load, which is never, Reload, which is never, also never, <laughs> actually more never. Yes. <laughs> if we can put that on like some sort of weird scale there. And St. Anger, which I know Ren says he listens to that like once a year and it doesn't get better with age. Like it is aged like, I don't know, vinegar with pubic hair in it. <laughs> and I know I said like, well, you know, we're not going to count bands with like a return to form. While I think... You know, some of the more recent albums have been better. Um, you know, uh, I would say, you know, Death Magnetic is a pretty decent album. The newest one definitely had its moments. But in terms of it being as good as Kill Em All, Red the Lightning, Master of Puppets, and Injustice for All, no, not even not close. Not even close. The first four records, awesome. Everything else, and I'm not a fan of Death Magnetic or 72 Seasons, and mine's mostly because of Lars and his bullshit. Load is... a not good. I like Bleeding Me and then turning it off. That's right, not a song right, on right. there, but... Reload is, is poop. It's leftover I, poop. I, I will say that maybe one of their redeeming factors later on would have been Garage Days and really only a couple songs off of Garage Days. Saint Anger is one of the worst things I've ever heard ever. Yeah, you all know my story about that. I bought the record and then threw it out the window. And that's the only time I've ever really disposed of a CD in that manner. And then Death Magnetic, I think they, they tried, but it, they couldn't quite land it. And 72 Seasons, just, just stop. That's my thing. Stop. I mean, the band uh, doesn't have anything to prove. They, they don't. I actually had some guy argue with me at work the other day because I told him everything after Injustice was garbage. And he was like, what do you mean? You, how can you call yourself a metalhead? And I was like... Very easily. Very easily. And then I listed off a few reasons why. And then I said, how can you call yourself a metalhead? And he just left. So that's where I'm at. I personally think they should have quit a long time ago. But, you know... I mean, what? Like, the Black Album's... Sold what like fifty million albums right, or some right. ridiculous I mean, number, you know. And there was a period where I did like it, but then I started listening to more of the earlier stuff, and you know, the Black Album eventually even just was like, dude, I've heard like every single song yeah. on the radio. I can't even escape this yep. album if I want to. Yep. And there's night and day difference between those first four and everything else. Yeah. And it, especially when you listen to the first four more, and then you you hear something new, and you're like, this just doesn't hit as hard. Like this is dumb. And that's kind of where I'm at with Metallica. So I think they got worse. Yeah, they got worse. And now one that's going to suck to talk about. Mastodon. Whew. You could go either way with this one. You could. I mean, you really could. Don't get me wrong. I love Remission and Leviathan wholeheartedly. Hearts Alive still to this day will probably always be one of my most favorite Mastodon songs ever. I remember when Crack This Guy first came out. And coming off of Blood Mountain, you know, when I heard him like sing and I was like... I'm not so sure I like this. And that was my very first take. And then I listened to Crack the Sky more, and now it's one of my favorite records. And now I also like the new, you know, big chorus sing-songy era of Mastodon. Especially now that Bron sings a whole lot more, and he's not only a killer drummer, but a killer vocalist. So, like, I like every era of Mastodon. And I, I feel that not a whole lot 
unless they completely shit the bed from here on out, which I don't see them doing, I don't think you can really harm Mastodon. Like, obviously their sound changed and they're not as heavy or as, you know, like vicious as they were in the beginning, but I have zero complaints about newer Mastodon. Mm. So, I I don't know. I'm I'm definitely at a, a standstill point. This one is, is tough to call, and I mean, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm probably in the standstill point, though I can make arguments for either. Like, yeah, if I argue, you know, the earlier stuff is better, I lose a lot of the melody. Yep. Like, there's still great, like, melodies and hooks on Leviathan, Blood Mountain, maybe not as much on Remission, but there's some banging riffs on there. Yeah. But I feel like I lose out a lot of the vocal melody and, you know, again, like more of the clever songwriting because I feel they got better as songwriters and musicians along the way, too. Like, I love Remission, even though it is kind of like one giant drum fill with sludge riffs on it. But It's a great drum fill. But their later stuff, way more nuanced, way more expansive. And, I mean, Crack the Sky is my favorite Mastodon album. You know, yep. I, we ranked them and it's hard to argue with that album. It's absolutely amazing. But my number two is Leviathan. So I'm like, oh God, dude, like this is it's tough to say because musically and in terms of songwriting, I think this band got a lot better. Yeah. And in terms of like songwriting dynamics and making the songs pop more, like, yeah, they found a way to be accessible, but they also found a way to be themselves still. Like, it still sounds like Macedon. And their transition to this sound has been incremental. Like, it hasn't been well, like a watershed to heritage moment where like, right, right. whoa, hold on. Right. So. Like, maybe you could argue between Blood Mountain and uh, Crack the Sky that, yeah, like those clean vocals right out of the gate sounds way different than anything they had done. But, you know, those clean vocals were at least introduced on Blood Mountain. So, I mean, this band has done, again, such a great job evolving over time and still delivering such a recognizable sound. I, I can't say they're worse. Uh, I can't say they're better just because, I don't know, it, it's, I, I feel like I'd be shitting on the earlier stuff because I don't want to do that because it's awesome. Well, they made it such a natural progression too. It's, it's not like they took a really hard shift. I mean, granted, from Blood Mountain to Crack the Sky, it, it was a bigger shift because they incorporated more, you know, melodies in their vocals. And like, I, I wasn't prepared for it, but now it makes more sense to me as a natural progression. And they've done nothing but progress naturally from that point. And they do it ever so subtly where you don't really notice it right off the bat. Like now, here we are to Hushed and Grim, which is badass. Oh, um, but I can see how they got there. And like the road they took to get there, they, they took the high road. Ah, because <laughs> that's mass enough. Yeah. Fun. So yeah, I'm I'm stuck in the middle. Uh, I'm kind of neutral on this one. I think no matter what, if you're listening to Mastodon, you're listening to an awesome band, yeah. regardless if it's early or later. They're they're just a killer band. Yeah. All right. Next up is a band that we ranked very early on, and definitely has a very divisive fan base, especially at you know one particular era. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about Sepultura and I like Sepultura, like kind of across the board. Sepultura is one of the most important bands in terms of me becoming a metalhead. I've yep. gushed about Arise numerous times. It is one of my favorite albums of all time. Desert Island shit. I'm not leaving without it. But there was also the Derek Green era, which I know is not a lot of people's favorites, but there's still like good stuff in the Derek Green era, like Dante 21, I really enjoy that album. Machine Messiah, I thought was fantastic. Quadra, I think was really yeah. good too. There's solid albums in there, but there's also uh, some like not great ones, mm -hmm. and bordering on like, dude, what the hell were you thinking? Like, Against was not a great start for that era. Mm -mm. And I'm pretty sure the band would probably agree with me on that one, because that is probably their least well-received album. And I have such a strong attachment to the early, you know, Max Cavalera stuff. Beneath the Remains is untouchable to me. I love Schizophrenia, despite the production being kind of ass on the original <laughs> yeah they did a good job re-recording it but yeah that yeah, yeah. yeah the bass drums just sound like someone bouncing a basketball really fast and again like you know production and how raw it was like morbid visions and best of devastation i think are awesome too but yeah the Derek green era i have to say is worse just because some of my least favorite material is on there i don't necessarily think that you know it's 
you know, absolutely terrible music. Again, this is all subjective, but that is kind of the era where I just don't get into as many albums for sure. And that original era is kind of genre defining, like, you know, that was a huge one for like Death Thrash and sort of the blending of the two there and just fantastic songwriting, some of the best metal riffs, period. Mm -hmm. Ah, God. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Arise, Beneath the Remains, Chaos ID, Schizophrenia, like those albums are so damn good. And, you know, Roots has its moments too, but, you know, it's, it's not one of my favorites either. But yeah, I gotta say that, yeah, uh, they, they got worse. Yeah, I <laughs> guess. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily feel completely right, but it does feel a little accurate. I don't know. No matter how you want to look at it, there's two eras of Sepultura. There's the Max era, and there's the Derek Green era. And I, much like Nick, find that there's only a, a small few things in the Derek Green era that were really awesome. Uh, for me, the mediator between heart and head, um, Machine Messiah, Quadra, and, and Dante 21. And then you have the Max era, which for me also was a huge part of me getting into metal and, and death metal and thrash and all those wonderful things. You know, I got shown Sepultura when I was a kid and, uh, you know, it changed my life as a, a music listener. You know, nothing will ever touch Beneath the Remains or Arise or Chaos AD. I'm just gonna put that out there. As far as making it sound worse, it was different and it didn't have Max. I hate to say something was worse based on that fact, but I like early Sepultura way more than I like the Derek Green era. Not that there weren't great albums that came out in that era, but I would also say that it got worse after and, Max left. And I hate yeah. to, I hate to say that, but like I got nothing against Derek Green. I think he's I don't a either. solid vocalist. And, In fact, he might have more like vocal range than Max. That I think is actually pretty true. Plus he's an Ohio guy. Like he came from the right. Cleveland hardcore right. scene. And I I've nothing against the man. I've nothing against the band after that. I not, not as people at least, but as far as the music is concerned, I just think it hit harder in the earlier years than it did in the later years. And it's not really that they got like horrible i still wouldn't say fuck you to those records you know or, or that era i would just say that for me personally it got worse because it lacked i don't know the nostalgia <laughs> i mean that that you does know? play a part that does play a part yeah. the next one here there's again like a big division in terms of eras of this band sound you could even argue that there are like three distinct eras i guess but uh crossing conformity did they get better or did they get worse this is one that's kind of difficult because the eras are so vastly different. Now, I got into Corrosion Conformity with their album Deliverance. In fact, COC was the first band I ever saw live. I fell in love with their sludgy hooks, their great melodies, great lyrics, kind of just great everything. I got into Wise Blood really heavily too. America's Volume Dealer well, was a bit of a falling off for me, but In the Arms of God was great. But I also, in this period, got into uh, their earlier stuff, which is their crossover years. And I remembered not long after picking up Wise Blood, I saw a copy of Technocracy sitting in a used bin. I was like, hey, that's Corrosion Conformity. It's a different logo, can't be that different. And it was vastly different. Now, years later, I found a copy of Animosity, which I will say is just an absolutely excellent crossover thrash album. It's flat out amazing. I love that album. But Technocracy was not like the best way for me to get in it because that was when they had Simon Bob on vocals, and that dude was not a good <laughs> vocalist at all. In fact, I'm glad that there were Mike Dean versions of all the songs on that EP, because I could just skip past all of the Simon Bob stuff. Like, dude, Hungry Child, man, I, like the vocal hook on there, like it could have been there, but it wasn't because, again, Simon Bob. Now, in terms of like whether or not they got better, I don't know, like, I mean, as musicians, once again, I'll make the argument that they did because musically, I just think there was more thought and more variety in COC's later sound. Like, Blind is kind of like a transitional album where they were definitely kicking off a whole new era of the band. The songs were different. There was still like a little bit of like leftover thrashy riffs on there, but Deliverance was the one where I think they just kind of came into this almost entirely new sound and that was large in part due to Pepper Keenan being in the band his vocals, his guitar harmonies with Woody, 
just absolutely fantastic stuff. And that being the era I really latched onto and still go back to quite often, I jammed Deliverance, God, uh, like a month ago, and mm -hmm. I was like, man, dude, this just brings back mm -hmm. so many great memories back when I had a metabolism and, you know, <laughs> didn't have to shave my beard because I couldn't grow one. You know, kind of like where you're at right now. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Oh, you're so funny. Mr. Funny Man. <laughs> <laughs> but there was also that era with just, you know, Woody, Mike, and uh, Reed. And, uh, you know, those two albums they put out, I don't know, they really didn't do much for me. And I did really enjoy No Cross, No Crown. It kind of was like a bit of a comeback. And in fact, I think they're actually working on a new album now. Uh, but, yeah, as much as I love Animosity, that's like kind of the big, glowing, like, awesome spot in the earlier sound. So I got to go with they got better. Like, musicians, songwriting, more memorable songs. Animosity is absolutely amazing. Eye for an Eye is fun. You know, it's, it's very raw sounding. And technocracy is good as long as Simon Bob's not singing any of the songs, which luckily, mm. again, I had that option. But yeah, I, I got to go with COC got better. I got introduced to COC with Deliverance. That's where I started. I remember hearing stuff before Deliverance, after I was already into COC, like after Wise Blood came out, after America's Volume Dealer came out, I had heard that there was earlier COC, so naturally I was like, okay, I'm going to go back and listen to it. And it just didn't hit as hard with me because the era of COC that I liked was Deliverance, Wise Blood, and everything, you know, after that. I don't have the same story with them, at least. Like, I, I can't tell you that I liked the earlier stuff because really I didn't really like the earlier stuff. Even though now, you know, years later I'm a fan of, of Crossover Thrash, maybe I'll have to go back and listen to it. But I can't sit here and say, like, oh yeah, those were great times because I don't know about those times. Blind had some good moments on it, mostly the Shrouded Temples, Vote With A Bullet. And I think those are closer to what the sound that I got into them with sounded like. Like, there's definite elements in these Shrouded Temples and Vote With A Bullet that are on Deliverance or, say, Wise Blood. So that's where I was. After In The Arms Of God, I kind of fell off of COC. I remember hearing something off the self-titled record and being like, eh, it's all right. Mostly because Pepper was gone. And Pepper, I think, that era of COC from what I'm hearing here, the Pepper era for me personally is my favorite era because I think Pepper Keenan's a badass. He was a great seasoning to the sound. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, after Pepper left, I just kind of fell off. So, you know, I haven't really listened to anything beyond the self-titled, so I can't really tell you. I can just say what my favorite era was. So I unfortunately have to sit in the middle because I don't have the familiarity with either A, the beginning, or B, the end. That's where I'm at. But I will say, again, for me personally, that Deliverance and Wise Blood are probably in my top, like, 50 records of all time. Like, they're that damn good. I will never turn those off if they come on. But yeah, I sit in the middle of the road with COC. Next up, and this one ought to be a fun one because every album is different. And with that, you can almost create separate tribes for every yeah. small era of this band. Carcass. Did they get better or did they get worse? Ah, man. There's no right answer here. <laughs> there really isn't because no matter what, a fan of a certain era will probably bite my head off. And I get it, you know, uh, this band has written vastly different albums, and in their own right, I would say all of them are good, or at least like good examples of maybe a shift in their sound, maybe Minus Swan Song, still not a fan of that one. Sure. But I'll even defend, like, Rika Petrifaction as being, like, immensely groundbreaking. I mean, I don't even 100%. need to defend that. It is groundbreaking for gore grind and grindcore, but uh, it, it it sounds terrible. <laughs> it still sounds terrible. It's it's more of a novelty for me. Yeah. Symphonies of Sickness is kind of where like everything started to gel a little bit and you kind of get that more death grind sound. The riffs started coming out. Um, man, it, it is really tough for me to say because I got into them with Heartwork. Me too. And Heartwork is like a God tier album for me. And, I mean, like, kind of 1A and 1B necroticism's right up there, too. Yep. So this is really difficult for me to say. I mean, if I was going by musicality and just their ability to write more intricate songs, duh, the newer stuff is definitely more innate. Like, everything from necroticism on yep. is definitely a bit better and more nuanced than the earlier stuff. But not all of it packs the same punch. In fact, all of them pack a very different punch. Except for Swan Song, which doesn't pack much of a punch at all. And I've liked all their albums since they've come back, too. Like, Surgical Steel, 
absolutely whoops what ass. ass. It's one of the best comeback albums ever. And Torn Arteries, too. Uh, I think that's an absolutely awesome album that almost kind of, like, showcases their entire career in a lot of respects. Like, you have, like, the faster, thrashier, almost kind of grindy stuff. Like, I mean, it doesn't go, like, full bore grind on there. But, I mean... It's kind of got like elements of like different albums, like hard work. There's even some callbacks to Swan Song. And I think they did it all really well. So I don't know this one's kind of weird because like <laughs> my period where I really got into them is kind of smack dab in the middle of their discography. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that's kind of where I'm at. Again, there's like great albums on either side and there's eh, kind of questionable albums on either side, I guess. But I like pretty much all their stuff so it's really hard to say like musicality wise again i would say that they are better but in terms of like that whole subjective is my heart in this as much as like you know the stuff that i absolutely love by this band uh i don't know it's close i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna lean on better yeah. I'm going to lean on better overall. I'm not going to lie in the middle on this one because I do believe they legit became better songwriters, musicians, all that stuff. Bill Steer is a riff god. <laughs> yes, like, he is. He's one of my favorite guitarists in death metal flat out. That dude just has a knack for melody and just like the best fucking riffs. So, yeah, I, I, guess, I guess they got better. I don't know. I'm going to get my head bit off. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> I'm used to getting my head bit off on this channel. I'm not gonna say why. You probably all know why anyway. Everybody talks about it all the time. So yeah, I don't care. I will also say that they got better. Even though my story is somewhat similar, I also got into Carcass right at Heart Work. Rin showed me Heart Work, and I remember even back then going, man, this record kicks ass. Oh, dude, that riff comes on a buried dude, dude. That guitar tone is borderline oh. perfect. <laughs> So yeah, hard work is killer. Um, of course, Surgical Steel was awesome. You know, getting in the later years, of course their sound progresses and they become better musicians. They're older, they've been doing it a while. I also stand in that camp of, well, there's a couple separate eras. First of all, Rika Putrefaction, my biggest problem with that record is just the mix is just ass. If the mix wasn't ass, I don't know, it, 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 it could be a little bit better, but like, again, you have another genre-defining album. Like, this was pretty much the beginning of like, grind and gore grind specifically. yeah gore grind yeah specifically you know. the weird thing is like i like like a ton of albums that that album inspired but that album is still just like i mean it's okay just sure. because of the mix like i really would like to hear more in it but i don't think that's an option because even the remastered version of it i was like dude this still right, sounds, still sounds like ass. yeah so I, I don't know you know if they end up at like mdf or something and do re faction in its entirety i imagine it'll sound pretty great because there's been like 35 years passed since then so we're good yeah but really you know heart work and beyond it just gets progressively better because except for swan song except for swan song you know it's, it's carcass they're they're riffy they're melodic they're great we've seen them quite a few times now and i really enjoy carcass and uh yeah you know they're just a good example of a, a band that just keeps going even though there may be some some holes in between things and some time periods where nothing happened like they still came out swinging dude when surgical steel came out dude, woo, oh. that was a banger and then torn arteries came out and that was really high on the list i know for all of our year-end lists and a great album and yeah so i think they got better i mean they're, they're carcass it's not like they completely suck to begin with yeah I, I would say that they got better as well and then another one i thought that we would throw on there because this band was, in my opinion, really good at one time. Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. I hate to preface it that way, but Veil of Maya. I got into Veil of Maya when I was into my whole gent thing. So, like, you know, Meshuggah and Periphery and, like, Bleeding Skies and, like, all that crap. I got into Veil of Maya because they reminded me an awful lot of Meshuggah. So I was like, hell yeah. Common Man's Collapse, Id, and Eclipse. Those records were all banger. They're riffy as hell. And granted, yeah, it's deathcore, but I don't care. Like, yeah, their first EP is really good, too. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it doesn't matter. Veil of May got progressively worse. The first three albums were amazing. There were still death girls. There were very syncopated riffs. There was a lot of chugging going on. Like, it was very much Meshuggah. Very genty, very off-time. All the things I loved at the time. It sounded more metal. And then you get into uh, Matriarch and just... They get a, a singer that sounds kind of like Spencer Satello, and I, I'm just done. Yeah, they just became, like, another periphery, and all the distinction in their sound just kind of left. Yep. I do like the earlier stuff. Common Man's Collapse is awesome, and I really liked Id, too. Yep. Uh, Eclipse was also pretty good, a little uneven, but I liked it. It was still enjoyable. 
it did what like that style of deathcore should do in terms of like yeah it had the heavy syncopated breakdowns they were cleverly written there's all sorts of crazy guitar in there blast beats guttural vocals like it was heavy it was intense there was still melody in there yep and it didn't try to cross over into periphery ish territory and then they got the new singer and i picked up that album i believe it might still be in my collection i don't know i haven't listened to it since i got it uh and i was like no yep this just sounds like periphery and i mean that kind of became like a bit of a thing in terms of like sumerian records where they started moving away from a lot of their more extreme acts in terms of like you know, uh, like the more death metal oriented stuff, yeah. like the faceless, they really weren't like promoting them very much anymore. And a lot of the new signings were, you know, kind of genty or they were just signing like flat out rock bands and such. So it was kind of a shift in the label, but yeah, musically, I mean, I guess it was kind of the same, except it was more melodic, but like I couldn't get behind the vocal shift. It just became stock. It just yep. became like, yep. A, a band you thought of and like, oh yeah, that's a gent band. And really nothing more because I don't think any of the songs really stood out. Like I've heard New Veil vale Maya and there's really just nothing about it that I, I really like anymore. Like it's yeah. just kind of lost a lot of the heft and again, it just it, sounds like periphery. Newer Veil vale Maya, I think it's boring. It lost a lot of the heft. Like there's still some like syncopated riffing going on in there, but now they're focusing more on melodic vocals or cleans or just it doesn't have the same like punch that the first three records did so. yeah this feels like i don't know like stuff that just gets booked on like you know the big like rock Lahoma style yeah, right. like things like yeah this is our heavy band for the day right the rest of it will be a lot of bands that sound like breaking benjamin mm-hmm. or five finger death punch or other things that I just yeah I'm I'm not really a fan of right and it's cool if you are that's just not me but yeah this shift it's it's worse yes it's flat out worse I'm just not a fan of newer Veil of Maya no next one on here definitely one that well a lot of old school Melodeth fans talk about and pine for yesteryear and I'm fucking one of them uh, in flames did they get better or did they get worse I'm just gonna go ahead and say they got worse. worse. Uh, man, I loved this band back in the day. Dude, Just Erase, Horacle, uh, Clayman Colony. Hell, I even liked Reroot to Remain and a little bit of Soundtrack to Your Escape. And uh, even Come Clarity. Like, all right, it's not exactly like the old stuff. I mean, I would say Clayman was kind of a turning point for the band, mm-hmm. but I love that album. Dude, Pinball Map. That song fucking rules. But when we got to A Sense of Purpose, that was the first time that my fandom was kind of questioning the decisions that I was making because I listened to that and I was like, dude, what happened to the guitars? They're all <laughs> muddy. Why is it almost like entirely like a, a gruff singing now and then just flat out singing? After that, it only got worse in my opinion. Like, dude, Siren Charms, oh my God, that album's <laughs> bad. It's just terrible. Like, uh, Battles, not much better. Actually, maybe worse. I don't know. I haven't listened to that one since I got it. Listened to it once and went, uh, really? They fucking got my money again. It sucks because I absolutely love their earlier stuff. Like, it's, you know, like some of the best mellow death out there. It's genre defining. It's that good. Dude, uh, Subterranean 2 as well. Killer album. But, uh, yeah, like, everything after, like, I get, like, the lineup shifted so damn much, it's practically a different band. In fact, I don't think they have a single original member. Anders is probably the longest tenured member there, and he was originally in Dark Tranquility, and then Michael Stahn was also in uh, in Flames, and they kind of just did a swap, and I'll be honest, Dark Tranquility got the better of the swap, in my opinion. But, you know, I get that Anders uh, is an acquired taste, like, he's got okay vocals like i've never been a huge fan of his cleans but it's the music i don't even know what to call it now like yeah the last album teased elements of their earlier sound and there were some good songs in it i'll admit it but it wasn't the comeback i was kind of hoping for but yeah it's it's turned into this like alt metal groove metal thing and kind of stock yeah, yeah like there's not a lot of character to it and yeah like i i just i can't get into newer in flames like i could get into older in flames and again it does feel like a completely different band at this point and 
to a degree kind of is but yeah i'm i'm firmly on the they got worse side of this and i don't see that changing i'm also on the they got worse boat now my inflamed story once again is probably i don't know it's definitely not like yours but it's kind of close so back in the i guess mid 2000s i dated a girl who was big into in flames and iced earth and a handful of other things but she used to jam over and over and over again for the five years we were together Jester Race, Horacle, Colony, and Clayman over and over and over and over again. So that's how I got introduced to In Flames, and that's my era of In Flames. And after we broke up, I stopped listening to In Flames because they still weren't my favorite, although I, I did enjoy those records. But everything after Clayman, in my opinion, and I know you've got some others, but everything after Clayman, in my opinion, became kind of boring. And you could hear just the, the songs just kind of fall off. And towards the end, you get now to this last one that was released, what, last year? Yeah. And there were some things in it that made me harken back to the old days, and I was like, okay, cool. But for the most part, it just became kind of stocky and groovy and... It definitely wasn't as awesome as most of Horacle and Colony. I'll put it that way. It wasn't even close. No. Jester Race, Horacle, Colony, and Clayman, that was my era of In Flames. And that is, in my opinion, when they sounded the best. And they haven't sounded like that since. It just sounded like they were having more fun with the music and they didn't buy, mind being a little bit more adventurous. And they were still heavy and they had a lot of like pretty harmonies. And the songwriting in general overall, the band as a whole was better during those times. And they've been through so many member changes and there's not really anybody original from back in the day when things were worth a shit. So it's kind of like a whole different band. Yeah. And I mean... I, I gotta think of like what the motivations were like I know like early in their career they made a trip across the pond here to the states and that was mainly because like the metallic hardcore scene was absolutely in love with them and yeah. they were a huge influence on them you know across the board like dude you can't listen to a kill switch engage song without <laughs> hearing the flames riffs <laughs> yeah that's just you know kind of part of kill switch's sound but with this band and some of the other bands on here one of the things i think about is like the motivation behind the change whether it's like an artistic change or you're just looking for a broader appeal and just trying to get that nut and you know become a bigger band trying to make some money yeah, yeah. you know and i you know i can't fault you man like dude a lot of starving artists out there in terms of you know metal musicians and you know this this whole genre really isn't like the best in the way of being like a popularity contest, you know, even like the higher tier bands, like, you know, outside of like Metallica, of course, because, you know, they, they could just sit on their asses for the rest of their life and just like, oh, look, a pile of money. <laughs> and like some of the more established bands, sure. But in terms of bands like, you know, getting started out, they've been around for, you know, a little while, like it can be tough out there in terms of making money. So yeah, that definitely plays into it. But I don't know, like there's part of me that just respects like bands that either transition slowly or they just stick it out and, yeah. you know, hey, sometimes it will just catch on a little bit later in your career, even if, you know, it kind of sucks waiting. And then last but certainly not least, at least last for this video, a band that both he and I are gigantic fans of, Catatonia. Yeah, I got into this band with The Great Cold Distance and then went further on from there. I did kind of go back a little bit. Last Fear Deal, I think, is where they started to find the bits and pieces of the sound they have currently. I did duck back a little farther, like Brave Murder Day, and I, I don't mind that album. Just, to me, it doesn't have the same sound that they have now that I've fallen in love with. I know Nick's gonna talk in great length about Brave Murder Day, but I mean, yeah, The Great Cold Distance, I, I adore that album. Really, everything off of Night is the New Day, even Dead End Kings was awesome. I, I own Uncrowned and Dethroned, the acoustic, I think that's beautiful. I love Johan's voice, I'm not gonna lie. And everything after that was killer. I think they got better. I'll let Nick talk more about the, the past here, because like I said, I didn't find favor with things before Last Fair Deal, but I'll let Nick talk more. Uh, this one's a little bit more difficult for me, but I will admit that this band has gotten better, I think. And that is no disrespect to their earlier material. In fact, uh, Brave Murder Day would be high on my list if we were to rank them. Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> I love that album. It's pretty much like, you know, Metalhead's proving like, yeah, we can write a Cure album and it'll be awesome. <laughs> And it is. I love that album. I think it's one of Michael Ockerfeld's best, like, growling vocal performances. And the songs are just haunting. 
they're just dark and dreary and the clean vocals that pop up you know kind of the big tease for like stuff to come up in terms of like Johan's vocal prowess I love it. And even Dance of December Souls, I think, is, you know, pretty solid. I mean, I think there's a point on that album where you can actually hear Johan blow out his vocals growling, which is why he didn't growl after that. It's just this long transitional period that I think it took for them to get to the sound that I initially got into him with, because I got into him with the same album, Great Cold Distance. I think that's a great album. But yeah, tonight's decision, Discouraged Ones, while I like well, discouraged ones. I'm really not a big fan of tonight's decision. I think they were building a foundation on like a new sound. It just wasn't quite there yet. Last Fair Deal gone down, it really started to kind of like, you know, gel together. It was like, all right, this is getting a bit better. But Jonas's vocals still weren't quite there. And then Viva Emptiness came out. It was like that, that right there. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah. And then pretty much everything after that, I mean, City Barrels was so-so, but it still had some good songs in it. But yeah, everything after that, I have absolutely loved. Their, their last album is amazing. Yep. Sky Board of Stars, that, that might be high on my list too. I don't know. <laughs> the Fall of Hearts is amazing. I mean, honestly, during this period of Opeth not doing very Opeth things, sure. they kind of wrote like an Opeth album. Like that's maybe one of their proggiest albums. So yeah, as much as I love Brave Murder Day, I, I got to say that this band got better. I like their songwriting. I think... Mm -hmm. They've just kind of carved out a unique little space in metal because I don't even know what to call them. Like, yeah, you could call them like melodic doom metal yeah. or alt metal. It's still kind of proggy. It's catatonia. That's pretty much uh, all I can really describe them as. And I mean, I think this band had like kind of uniqueness in their blood right mm -hmm. from the start. Because even the earlier stuff really didn't sound like anyone else. Like they were kind of lumped in with the Peaceful bands and... Granted, they were similar, but Catatonia still stood out, you know, from those as well. So, yeah, it's better, but, again, there's great stuff in the past, too. So, yeah, I don't know. And Catatonia is just awesome. Just listen to Catatonia. They're great. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, this is kind of the end of this one. We might do another one because we still have a lot of bands on here that we just didn't get down to. We just wanted to start off with 10 because 10's a good number. Right. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. This was kind of fun. We'll see what you guys think of it. So... If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com. Our Patreon link is there. It is also on our channel up in the banner in the bottom right-hand corner. But if you're looking for Thralls Metal stuff, you have to go to thrallsmetal.com. We have t-shirts, both old and new. The old ones are discounted, provided we have your size. And we even have hats, too. So if you're looking for any of that stuff, click the link down below. And as always, tons of stuff going on at Thrills the Metal. Album reviews, discography rankings. You'll probably see Meshuggah pop up here real soon. States of Metal, Is It Metal, Is It Not Metal, Nick's Never Ending Collection updates, and now these discussion forums, which we have started. I think these are a great idea. Please let us know what you think. Because really, we keep doing all this stuff and coming up with all these ideas all for you guys. We appreciate you, all of our family, our friends, our subscribers, everyone that interacts with us, the people we run into at shows. It's all pretty fucking awesome. We're thankful for you. Thank you for being here, Nick. Yeah, you guys absolutely rule, and uh, yeah, tons of stuff coming in the future. So one more big thank you because of all of your rulage, and we will catch you later.